everybody, Randy here in the Eastwood Garage. Thanks for joining us for another live video on Facebook, YouTube, and at eastwood.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube and click the bell icon when you subscribe so you're notified of all these. Today I've got Andy with us, who is project, uh, product manager of metal fabrication category. He's going to go over uh, the three shrinker stretchers that we offer and show you how to make some parts. And if you have any questions, Scotty C's over here answering all of your shrinker stretcher questions today. Scott, what's your favorite, the shrinker or the stretcher? Probably the shrinker. That way you can get it down to a nice tight little area, make what you need. And also, for anyone who's close enough, see if you can make it to Carlisle this coming weekend. We're going to be at the Carlisle show. Are you going to be at Carlisle? Yes, I am. So, if, so any of you that are fans of Scott, you see him here twice a week, sometimes three times when he does his own video. Uh, he'll be at Carlisle. Big show. Spring yep. Carlisle is huge. It definitely is. It starts is, yeah. Wednesday? Uh, I think it starts Wednesday. Uh, I'll be out there uh, Friday and Saturday when it really starts ramping up. Yeah, so that, I mean, I imagine there's going to be a line in the booth now. Yeah, there you go. So, <laughs> you have a meet yeah. and greet. So, and if you have any questions today, post them as a comment on Facebook or YouTube. Scott's going to answer them or throw them over to us. So first, before I turn it over to Andy, let's just quickly go over what a shrinker and stretcher is if you're not familiar. Um, one thing is, it can take a, it can put an arc in a fender and take some waves out. And we're really going to go into depth in that in a couple minutes. And commonly what it's referred to, uh, used for is making windshield jams or uh, uh, windshield frames or door jams. It's what allows you to take a piece of metal like this and turn it, let me switch it around so it makes sense, like this and turn it into that. So, I did it again. Woo. So, so that's what it's going to allow you to do. So basically, Again, again, this area is stretched to make it bend like this, and this is shrunk to make it curve like that. And I'll let Joe get in here quick, and we'll just show you the jaws on these. They all work basically the same. Um, this is our, uh, the, the unit we've been offering for a, a while now. So as you can see, this is stretcher. So you can see the jaws come down and when they hit, and they pull apart and they pull apart right there, so it stretches. So now I'm going to bring the shrinker around. And you're going to see the complete opposite. When they come down, you're going to pull together, and that shrinks the metal. And if you don't believe how easy it works, uh, we're going to show you right here in a second. So, all right, Andy, can we, let's, I guess we'll go over each. We've got three of them set up here. Go over them quick and then start Moving some metal. Yep. So this is a setup that you, right now, you can buy on eastwood.com, which is the shrinker, it's a stretcher and the shrinker. Um, you do not get the plate. This is an add-on little feature. When it comes down to it, if you're working on a door jam or you're working on a window, you can grab this plate from us for a couple bucks and be able to switch back and forth. All you have to do is pull out your handle, swap it in the other side, and move around your vise in any orientation that you want to makes things a lot faster. You don't have to sit there and pull something out of a vise or even mount these, which they are threaded on the bottom, to the bench itself. We all have vices in our garage. If you don't, eastwood.com to get either a 6-inch or 8-inch. Um, but this makes it incredibly easy just to tighten down your vise, get to work. It makes it easy to store. You're just moving one Correct. thing. You just pull one thing off. You don't have to sit there and undo bolts off your workbench. You just loosen it up and you put it in any storage container or underneath your bench if you want to. And it's rated up to 18-gauge steel. Correct. Little move. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you this really quick, just how it works. Um, move a little bit of metal, and then we're going to move over to our two and uh, three quarter inch throat shrinker stretcher. As you notice, that one over there is um, only a single piece. It's not two. Um, you have interchangeable jaws. That way, if you don't have the room to have this entire setup over here, all you have to do is just swap out jaws of that one, mount that one to your bench. You do get a little bit more leverage with this, and you get a longer, um, longer handle and you also get almost three times the amount of throat. Um, so this one is a little bit more powerful unit, a little bit stronger, um, more compact when it comes to you only have one unit instead of you have two. Um, over to the eight inch throat, which is a standalone unit, you can put this on your bench and use the supplied handle, which this will come with. You can also buy this complete stand with it. Um, you do also get shrinker jaws and stretcher jaws with this one as you would with the, uh, the two and three quarter inch throat. And as you can see, it's got a large opening area right here for, the, uh, for any panel that it kind of overhangs. 
Um, what some people are going to ask is, can I stretch something that's a straight piece that's eight inches deep? You cannot do that. Um, the idea here is, if you're ever doing, say you're working on this bowl, which we'll, we'll show you in a minute, um, you're actually able to get into a piece and it can then drop down in this area right here. Uh, probably the motorcycle fender would be the best one to show. Um, if you ever had to get in from the back side, as you can see, you can then stretch or shrink this back side and it dips down into the, uh, the larger throat there. So this unit is available in just the top piece, which you can you know, mount on your bench or if you want the foot operated. That way you've got both hands on the piece and you've got more control that way. And it moves metal quick. Yes, very, very quick. Um, depending on your weight, if you really jump on it, you can either shrink or, uh, or stretch. Just pretty quick. Yeah, right? very, very quickly. Yeah. It is, um, it's really nice. It's really nice to use. And in this case, we don't actually have this one mounted right now. It is just yeah. sitting on the floor. So if you are just pushing gently, you can move still mm -hmm. a good amount of metal, but then you can then move it anywhere in the garage that you want to, get it out of the way. You don't need to drill the holes. Um, we do suggest you do that just for more stability and a little bit yeah. more safety. But when it comes down to it, it's mobile. Yep. And you can still be able to do all those things. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into a couple of little things to kind of show you guys what these actually do. Um, we'll start out by the bowl itself. Um, what Randy and those guys did earlier in the day was they took a hammer and they really just kind of beat this into submission. And what's going to happen is when you do that, you're only stretching the center and you're going to get waves on the outside. They had already shrunk this outer edge. And what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to shrink yeah. these ridges out. But you can see how bad this one, if you get it turned like that. Yep. Yeah. So if you're making, you know, hood scoop, trans tunnel, and the, anything has around it, a, f a motorcycle fender. Yeah, the same thing with too. this. What they did was they took a hammer and they, they beat out the center, and then they English wheel the center to kind of smooth. Regardless of whether you're English wheeling or not, you're only going to get so much smooth at it, you need to actually shrink those mm -hmm. edges. So what we'll do is um, we'll do exactly what we did here to both these pieces to show you that this is a really good way to finish the product and uh, get it to a nice tight arch. All right, so let's try the two and three quarter inch. Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Oh, you might have to stay on the other side. Yeah, well, uh -oh, are you a lefty? I am not. This thing works left-handed and right-handed. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to move fairly close to that rib that you saw, that little buckle, mm -hmm. and we're going to start putting a little bit of force in it, and we're going to keep moving over. You can already see that ridge flattened out. As if we kept on working all the way around this, mm -hmm. it would start tucking down further. But just with three or four quick hits, that went from a tight ridge like that down to a nice little slope. So we can spend the next two or three minutes and really get through this entire thing. We're going to move on to some other little projects that not everybody's going to be making a bowl at home. Yeah. So we're going to get into some pieces, the door jams, uh, motorcycle fender. Should we hit this one quick the same Absolutely. way? There's the shrinker. So I want to see if I can move this around. So as you can, we showed you here, I'll come out towards Joe a little bit. So you can see the waves in it. So we'll take them out and it should give it a little bit more arc. Actually, truth be told, cameraman Joe's the one who made this. So we almost should let him, I almost feel like I should swap with him and let him come and finish his masterpiece. So it's that easy. For those of you who have seen Joe, it is, it's, it's that easy that Joe made up this motorcycle fender. And honest, what was it, like half an hour before? You know, I mean, granted, it's, you know, it's not a full fender, you know, but, but these tools are that easy. Joe doesn't have a whole lot of a, you know, experience using them. And just from shooting video and watching us, he had no problems actually beating the shape in, um, using the English wheel to smooth it out, and then using the shrinker to, uh, to smooth it out a little bit. As you can see, Randy's not really even pushing down on that. He's kind of just throwing the handle down, using a little bit of the weight of his hand. So he's being able to move very quickly. And what's happening is he's putting small shrinks throughout in a nice arch. What I was doing is I was putting some weight into it, and I was moving a lot more material in one shot. Uh, depending on the application, you want to do what Randy did, or you want to do what I did, to either get a really tight, quick shrink, or you want to get a nice, 
minimal mm -hmm. strength throughout to be able to get that, that really, really smooth arc. Yeah. So, I mean, that's only a few minutes and it's just pretty much roughed in. And it's getting that shape this way too, just by just a little bit of shrinking. So what I'm going to do really quickly is to, to show you, Randy had showed you how the jaws move, but we want to show you how quickly it actually moves material. Yeah. So we get Joe, this is the one we're yeah. going to shoot Joe. What we're going to do, head, right? yeah, is we're going to put this in here. We're going to put it in a, an area that is not shrunk or stretched at all. Throw it in here and you can see that this is a straight line across the top. And I'm just gonna put some weight onto it. And I'm gonna do it very quickly so that way you can see it all happening at once very, very fast. And we'll move over. So you can see that piece moving fairly substantially. And if I keep moving back and forth. You, see the, you can see the whole thing bending. Yep. And that's shrinking it which actually moves it not as fast as stretching. Yeah, so if, if we you would were put the stretching in. it, you'd really see it moving. Yeah, look at that. Can you overstretch or overshrink something? Um, it depends on the material itself. So if you could, if you're using aluminum and you mm -hmm. went to stretch it, you'll actually end up tearing it if you don't yeah. use a very, very small amount of uh, a force. You can shrink aluminum all day long Stretching is more difficult. If you're going to stretch material, what you're going to end uh, up doing is. is you want to actually use almost like a hammer, mm -hmm. um, a thumbnail die. What it's going to do is it's going to squish it and actually form it out. And eventually you're going to hammer um, and dolly it out. So shrinker stretchers, shrinkers work very well with aluminum. But with stretching aluminum, you know, only very, very slight yeah. amounts, it will tear. And, and, if, and if you're doing steel like we're doing, if you shrink it and you think you went too far, just put it in the stretcher, yep, cap it back out. So um, before we move on to some Camaro parts, uh, do we have any questions there, Scott? Sure, there's one that just popped up. It's kind of perfect for what uh, Andy's uh, finishing up. I want to know kind of how tight of a curve you can get into with one of those. You know, is there any kind of limit, you know, before it just uh, hits up against itself? Um, yeah, it's going to depend on the, the actual unit you're using. The This unit right here is a little bit wider just because of how much it's got, got to get into a deeper section. So that we actually added some material on the outsides. So you're going to hit on these little extra, these other areas. But when it comes down to it, if I kept on working this thing back and forth, back and forth, you could technically hit the actual body of the unit itself. It's all going to come down to the amount of material that you're actually shrinking or stretching here. Um, it's almost trial and error depending on the piece you're actually using. So you can do a full 180 degree bend here it's going to take you a little bit of time. And you might want um, to harden it a little bit, right? Yeah, correct. The big thing is, is we're only doing roughly three quarters of an inch here. Um, as we're going, what's going to happen is it's going to start pulling away from the actual jaw itself. So if you see right here, we've got about, with this unit, two and three quarter inch throat depth. Mm -hmm. The reason because for that is not necessarily to get in further, to actually do a shrink or a stretch. It's for when you're doing a shrink, that right here, you can see how tight that is. As you're working with one of these guys, that arc will actually start pulling away from the jaw itself. So you can get a tighter arc with that unit or with the big eight inch than you could with the smaller ones. Eventually, you're just not gonna be moving much material because you're not gonna be in the jaws anymore. So you can do a full 180, all depending on the material you're using, but you can do a, you know, very tight bends. When it comes to shrinking, stretching, you might run out of material eventually because you're, you're technically thinning the material. Thin. So aluminum will, will, um, will tear very easily. Steel will not. So steel is a lot easier to, uh, to kind of go different distances with when it comes to shrinking or stretching. Any more questions there, Scotty? No, not for the time being. We'll continue on with the demonstration. All right. <laughs> so um, windshield. We go to that. One of us wants it. So, so real here, quick, yeah. we're just going to show what we did. This took... Probably 30 to 40 seconds, honestly, to put mm -hmm. together. The only reason it took any more than that is because you need to check your work. So as you can see, if we hold this up here, we're tight fit on both sides. At first, when you look at this, you think it's only one arch. It's it, actually yeah. not. It goes this way, left and right, and it also goes... So what we're going to do is we're going to give you guys a little small tips if you've never used a shrinker or a stretcher before. If you put your material, you measure down and you measure out, 
add a little bit more material than you think you need, just because yeah. you're going to be able to cut it off then eventually form it the way you need it to be. So we're going to hold this up, and as you can see, right here yeah. is I get my finger in there pretty much is edged off, and same thing on the opposite yeah. side. So what I'm going to so do so it's is going I'm, this way. Yeah, it's but going then back it's and also forth. going this way as well. Correct. So rule of thumb is if the outside pieces are off your workpiece, that means you need to stretch mm -hmm. the material to bend it around. If there's a valley on the inside, that means you need to shrink. Mm -hmm. um, so right off the bat is we all make mistakes, so make sure you mark your material. And right now you can see it says Camaro windshield. We've been touching it, so eventually that Sharpie kind of fades away. Also, as soon as you start using the shrinker or the stretcher, you're going to start wiping those away also. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an arrow down on all three ends, or one center and each end. That way, when I go to put this up there, I'm going to keep checking with that edge down. I'm going to use it over and over again. Eventually, I'm probably going to wear away that center mark, and I don't want to get halfway into this thing and realize that I just shrunk or I, <laughs> or I stretched the wrong side. So in order for us to quickly replicate this piece, we know we need to both stretch, and both. stretch both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the center, do slight amounts on just the bottom. We don't want to do both sides at a time. Mm -hmm. We want to just do the bottom and at least see if we can get that arc correct. And then we'll start on the other side. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go the to the, the foot big boy. unit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right in the center. I'm just going to use a tiny bit of, of force. And just going to move. So we worked from the center out, and we're going to go the opposite side. And I'm not pushing down hard because I know if I go too far, I'm going to have to switch the jaws out, and I'm going to have to go over to the shrinker. So what I did right there was just a couple quick hits, hardly any foot pressure. We're going to come back over. We're going to check. So right now, it's a little bit tough to see because we didn't do the top. But if you get up top and you look at it, we are against, we're pretty close to against on this side. Top's pretty close. Yeah, we're pretty close to against on this side. And we can't get much closer without starting yeah. to work on our opposite side. So if we get, if we look at it, you can see this side's very far off. Yeah. If we push it all the way down, it's almost a full inch. So we're going to then go to the top and we're going to start working on that. So Scott, while we're here, do we have any, any more questions? Or? Yeah, there's one uh, looking into, it looks like they're referring or asking, you know, is it better to take several small munches than one large, you know, munch at a time when you're moving the metal? I prefer smaller because then I know I'm not going over and then you don't end up with it getting bunched. Uh, those big uh, bunches, like if you can, if you really start laying into it where it's grabbing it together, um, while he's doing this, maybe I can, can hear. I'll get in here with Joe, maybe, and you can see how it bunches it. Oh, uh, one of us is lost. Yeah. So, so you can see here where the jaws are working. Is that it? Maybe like this. Is any of this picking up? There you go. So you can see those kind of yeah. black marks. So, I mean, some of that's just from, we moved it so far that the metal has to go somewhere. Um, but if you really hammer on it, you're going to move a bunch in one little area where I, I'd rather move a little over a, a wider area mm -hmm. so you don't quite get as much of that, which you're just going to, you know, file down, grind down, sand down afterwards, you know, so it's flat. It's not a big deal. Yeah. All right. So as Randy was talking, I may took a little bit more out of the one end, and if we get up there right now, you That's can about see perfect, it's almost. pretty darn close to perfect. The issue is right here is that there's a lot of peaks because Rough. of you know, we haven't some spot it welding. Down. Yeah, there hasn't been much um, much grinding down, not much metal conditioning to get that so it's nice and flat. If that wasn't there, yeah, you'd see that pretty much right in place. 
Um, so that, was that, that took us all three, two, three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nothing. So to when be. you guys buy a car and you see yeah. something as you know rough as this first looks, <laughs> you can yeah. replace that piece. You can replace a door jam, you know, a roof line in a yeah. couple minutes. Cheaper than paying somebody to do it. Maybe cheaper than buying when it's already finished. Correct. You it's, know, then when you're done, you know you did it yourself, which you can brag to your friends. Yep. Because they're going to not believe that you did it, and you don't got to tell them how easy it is. Yeah. Um, you can act like it's really hard. The one That's thing I love about our tools is the fact that I can go and spend maybe that's five, six hundred dollars mm -hmm. from a shop locally to get that fixed. They have to pull the windshield, they have to remove all the caulking. You're gonna to to do those things. You can buy the tool plus the money yeah. and then fix it, still have the tool left over, and you're still cheaper than it would be to actually and now pay you own another the tool. guy. And now you own the tool for life. Yeah. Should so, we should we do something else? Should we do one more? Yeah, absolutely. Like one of these? So you can see with this one, if we can, if you can zoom in over here, how substantial that is. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of shrinking here. So you can fit almost an entire, probably a whole finger. So we come down. Wall. Are you doing this one? Oh, yeah, you do it. <laughs> there's a lot of shrinking. Yeah. Figures we don't have the shrinker draws in the, uh, in the. Um, mm. Is that one a shrinker? The bigger. I believe it is. Eh. Maybe I should tighten this down. Shrinking takes a while, so we should. <laughs> I probably should have uh, um, put put them in the big one, All right? And the reason why it's taking longer to shrink is because instead of the material going away from itself, you're actually almost piling it up on top of itself. So. It's just going to take naturally a little bit longer. I'm, I think I might work up a sweat. If you need real muscle, we can we get have Scotty to let C Joe, over here. We get Scotty C over, maybe. <laughs> Please tell me our viewership's going up. I'm not working this hard for nothing. <laughs> huh? And as you can see before... That was the Ron Covell method I was using. Yeah. So <laughs> if, you, if anybody's ever watched him, we got some videos. Ron Covell's a master metal shaper, and uh, he's done some videos with us. And he likes to tap. A lot of people do it like this, just pull on it. And uh, Ron tends to do this. So sometimes I do that. What were you saying there, Andy? I didn't mean to cut you off there with my Ron Covell story. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, he is working a little bit harder to shrink. Um, that's where each one of these two units is going to come into play. If you want to move more metal a lot quicker, you do have a lot more leverage. You've got about a 30% larger handle on both these two units. So that's pretty close. There's a little bit of gap here. I should probably shrink a little bit more in there. Yeah, as, wherever those, those little gaps are, that's where you're going to be shrinking more material. And like so I, said, I didn't again, quite go down that far, so... Like we said again, he was working on that for all of two minutes. And you're going to take your, your wheel and you're going to cut, cut that piece out and you're going to be able to replace it and um, have new strong sheet metal in a place where, uh, where rust and rot was prior. So something you can see there, where yeah. he's placed that, if you get in real close, he has... He found out right here that it actually ends up having a different contour. So he did a bunch of shrinking here, but he actually needs to do a slight amount of stretching to get the yeah, to, to push this back up. Yeah. Um, or depending on that right here, if you can see this, it actually is bent in, in. a little bit further. Yeah. So that's what makes it a little bit more tough in this piece. Um, if you would go to one of our sheet metal breaks, you can go up to 135 degrees, so you would go past that 90 degree mark to be able to get the, the proper um, angle. Or you could hammer and dolly that yeah. over a little bit further to get the perfect fit. Just to get it perfect. And we, we can see in you know, three minutes in real time. Uh, we got our replacement to, piece. We managed to do that. So do we have any questions? No, we're good. You guys have thoroughly covered everything. All right, Scott. Uh, when are you live? Next on well, Monday? Next Monday. Scott, live. <laughs> okay, so you've got, I mean, you got a big... Big weekend. I know, going out to Carlisle, Carlisle, coming back, shooting alive. 
Come back doing a live on Monday on body fillers. Yep, I'll have to make sure to get my, my rest on Sunday. And make sure you've got your uh, your Sharpie ready to go for some autographs. There yes. you go. For a while. <laughs> yeah, we got to get some pictures printed up for you to take out there. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that it then? I believe so. All right. If you guys have any questions, um, you know, tech line's always there. We're always answering a bunch of uh, questions for you guys on you know how to use what you already have. Um, if you ever have any issues of just you know, getting something done, yeah. you know, we're here for you. We're always live on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, depending on normally Mondays is new prod yeah. and the product managers coming in. Um, Tomorrow we have seam sealers. Which is going to be Matt, I believe. Yeah, and Wednesday you can kind of see down here behind us, down here, uh, our pro shop garage flooring. It's 50% uh, off. Um, actually, it might be over 50% off right now. Stuff's pretty cool. Um, and actually, Wednesday, we're going to show you how easy that is uh, to put together. You know, how easy it is to assemble. All you need is a little mallet. You can assemble it in minutes. So, um, so that's going to be Wednesday's live. We're going to show that. Yep. And uh, like I said, big sale on it, over 50% off. If you go to eastwood.com now, you can get it. Or all three of these shrinker stretchers. If you go and just go to our metal fab category or search shrinker stretcher, any of these are going to, you know, get the job done. Yep really well like i said this is a kit right here these two you've got the the plate separate mm -hmm. if you need it if you don't you know that's fine <laughs> we also have the uh the larger jaw a little bit more leverage and then the big boy uh eight inch jaw with the foot pedestal yeah so they're all available eastwood.com yeah real and they're really easy to use and like i said anything from windshield frames door jams and even if you're you know, if you're making a motorcycle fender. So if you're just joining us, you, you know, you might want to go back. You can watch us recorded on Facebook or YouTube and see how we did all this. So, well, thanks a lot, Andy. I guess Appreciate I'll see it. you next month yep. in our live. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you Have tomorrow.